Morning all you beautiful people. It's me, Amanda. And I'm here today to talk to you about something, actually a few things. But, so, I've been wanting to do some videos where I'm recording myself milking. Unfortunately, milking has been kind of stressful, to be honest with you. Um, like, I was actually at a point yesterday where I was like, why do I even do this? Why? Because I was so tired of the goat sticking her feet in her milk and not, you know, spending all that effort and not getting anything other than a snack for my dogs out of it. Because I don't like goat pedicure milk, <laughs> but my dogs don't mind it. <laughs> So, you know, if the goat's foot went in the milk, the dog's got it. Um, over like the last week or so, that was literally all I had milked and been able to save. Um, I would switch out my pans when she stepped in it. And then this is from two milkings. Um, and it was all I was able to save from a whole week's worth of milk. And I was getting really really frustrated like this is not worth all the effort that I was expending so much so that I was actually thinking about like drying up mama because I was just done yesterday I mean I was done like I was really really over it to be honest with you but um I did order a goat hobble it's not it just shipped out today so I probably won't see it for a few days um so that was kind of frustrating, um, knowing that it was going to be another possibly week of me milking and not being able to save anything. I was just kind of, I would send. And then I actually watched, um, I don't know if any of you follow Blue Cactus Dairy Goats. They're awesome. They, Crystal and I think her husband's name is Derek, they're a wealth of information when it comes to Nigerians. They have so many helpful videos, plus you get to see all the adorable kids getting born. So I was watching one of the videos because they're in their kit, they're in full swing in their kidding season right now. They have had the 17 does, or not does, sorry, um, babies hit the ground. They've had seven does kid. As far as I know, I don't know if there have been any more since yesterday, but as of yesterday, they had like seven does kid and had 17 kids and um, they are just like up to their eyeballs in chaos right now. But um, I noticed that on the video, Crystal had the goat's legs hobbled with rope. Rope that was tied to the stand and then tied in like kind of a slip knot fashion to the goat's leg. And I thought to myself, God, that is so stupid simple. Why didn't I think of that? So this morning, I hobbled my goat like that. I tied some rope to the stand and then I tied it around her ankle. She's been kicking. She's been fighting. It's been kind of chaos honestly and so this is the milk that I got over the last week from two separate milkings where I was actually able to save anything this is what I got this morning guys like look at that I don't know if you can see the levels because I'm kind of you know moving them around a little bit here but that that's that's almost twice as much as this in one milking and this still isn't a ton of milk. Um, admittedly, she's not producing what she probably could be because of the fact that we got the milking stand up and running so late. And also, she's she's an older goat, so she doesn't produce as much. She had a single kid this time, um, which means there was less demand for her milk supply. So she's not milking a ton. But this is enough to put on my cereal, at least. This is enough. To cream my coffee and look how thick and rich and creamy it is like it just coats the side of that jar it's so gorgeous and I'm so happy but I yeah I'm sorry I know it's so weird that I'm so geeked about this but this is a game changer I was thinking I need a specialized piece of equipment to be able to successfully milk my goat and I did order it and I'm still gonna use it when I do get it you know I'm not gonna send it back or anything but all I needed was some rope. Rope that I had literally sitting around my house. Rope. So, if you are having difficulty milking your goat, 
and they're stuffing in it and you're walking away with this after two milkings and that's all you're getting and you're driving yourself a batty switch to a goat hobble and you will save yourself some sanity and some milk <laughs> so i'm excited to see if she has any milk this evening she hasn't had a lot in the evening i don't get much because baby is still kind of nursing through the day um but whatever i do get i'll just add right in here and then um yeah i just had, had to share that with you guys because i was so excited so troy works from home uh we both still have jobs he has a full-time job i have a part-time job and he works from home and he has meetings and stuff where he has to talk to people over zoom or the phone and normally I'm really conscious of that when I go in there to try to talk to him. Well, when after I was done milking, I ran in the house. I was like, babe, babe, it worked. <laughs> like, no regard for whether or not he was in a meeting. I had no chill about it. It was a little, <laughs> it was a little ridiculous. I still feel a little silly, but I'm excited. I'm excited. My, my, this is much more worth my work. I mean, much more worth my work. It, it's still not a lot of milk. I mean, but this is one older Nigerian. Next year, after kidding season, we will have three does who are going to kid next year. So we're going to have a, a, quite a bit of milk coming next year, and I'm excited for that too. But, oh, I don't know if I even told you guys. We reserved another doling. Um, I did post pictures of her on my Instagram. She's absolutely adorable. She comes from great lines. I'm super excited to have her and find somebody uh, who's got a really exceptional buck to breed the girls to. Um, owning goats has just become such an awesome part of, of my experience with, with having this homestead. I love to just go out there and hang out with them and um, I thought about taking you guys out there for this video, but I had some stuff I need to get done in the house real quick before I have to go run to work. So I wanted to just get it done and out of the way. Also wanted to show you guys this and this. Um, we snagged this because it was cheaper than this is and we figured it would be an easy way to test the soil's pH. Um... I also can use it for my houseplants, which I thought was pretty cool, and not have to use this. I don't want to use this for, my, you know, testing my, my houseplants because it's just not, not helpful. But this is nice for that. So I got this, and then today we're going to do the soil test kit for our garden. Um, we talked to some local people. It's our first year gardening in this zone. Um... We were going to till up our garden, and they've actually recommended that we don't do that because the ground's still so wet here. And also, um, so we're just going to kind of do some really basic, like, hand tilling. We're going to take the garden fork and go out there and just turn up the soil and then cover it with straw. And hopefully the straw will help kill off any grass or weeds that are there. Um, and then next week is when I start planting some of my... Uh, cooler weather crops outside like peas and uh, lettuces and kale and spinach and all that good stuff so I'm excited for those those are gonna get direct zone outside um, I'm gonna be getting my stand set up in the house here I probably should have already started seeds for some of my warmer weather crops but better late than never um, having the new growing season has kind of thrown me off I'm really used to like zone 5 I think I was in like 5b or 5A in Wisconsin, um, you didn't start your plants indoors in February in Wisconsin because by the time you, you could actually plant them outside in probably May, everything would have been way too, you know, past its prime to, to be able to take it out and plant it. So I got my germination mats, I got my grow lights, I got a stand, I've got all my trays, I've been saving toilet paper tubes, I'm gonna actually use those to start my seeds in. And then um, transfer them over to cups. I'm saving cups from my local coffee place um, to use for growing because I'm trying to cut down on my waste and use as reuse as much as I can. Um, makes me feel a little bit better about the fact that I go get coffee. I don't get coffee a lot, but you know, a couple times a week I get coffee, and the cups 
they're plastic and you can't do the reusable ones right now because of COVID. So um, reusing those cups to plant in makes me feel a little bit better about my coffee habit. <laughs> but I just had to come on and share with you guys my excitement. I mean, like, guys, guys, look at this. This, this is insane. That's insane. I hope you can see it. Look at that. That's almost twice as much. Two milkings, one milking, no foot in the bucket. I, a hobble, a hobble. If you're having the same problem I did, don't get discouraged. Don't think about drying up your dough. Just get a hobble, get some rope. You don't even need a hobble, just some rope. Don't tie the rope too tight. You want it tight enough where it's not gonna fall off, but you don't want it to hurt the dough either. So yes, highly recommend it. Had to share my excitement and I had to do it quick because I wanted you guys to see the genuine excitement that I do have. Um, it can be discouraging to homestead sometimes. There can be days where you're like, what am I doing? Um, but there are days like today where it's literally one of the most exciting things in the world just, and I, it, it, it seems silly. I'm sure it seems silly for me to be so excited about these two different amounts of milk and, and the difference between the two. But when you work hard for that milk, it makes a difference. <laughs> it really does. So I just wanted to share my excitement with you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful, beautiful, amazing day and, and that you find some joy in something silly. I, I hope you all have a, an amazing day and I'll see you later. Bye.